Hey guys, it's Makeshift, and today I'm going to show you how to machine sew appendages onto your plushies. I will demonstrate it with this tail right here, ending up with a seam just like this. You can use this method to attach pretty much any appendage to a plush. I've used it for heads, arms, legs, wings, tails, pretty much anything you need to attach to a plush. As long as it's a decent size and not absolutely tiny, uh, you can pretty much use this method to be able to machine stitch it onto the body rather than having to hand sew it. There's a few reasons you might want to do this. Uh, one is if you're making a pattern for a plush that you're going to make multiple times rather than having to hand sew on a piece over and over again, which could be more time consuming, you can just make a pattern using this method and then it'll be faster in the long run. Machine stitching often is sturdier than hand sewing. I personally can't get as strong of a stitch with hand sewing as I can with machine sewing, so I'm going to be more confident that this big old tail is going to stay on securely by machine stitching it rather than hand sewing it. And machine stitches are often cleaner than hand sewing, so you can see how this seam is nice and clean. I would personally not be able to get as clean of a seam with hand sewing as I would by using this method. So it's another plus for me to make your plush look more professional. And machine stitching is just overall faster in cases where you're working with a larger object like this. If I were to hand sew this piece on, it might take me an hour or two, but after I figure out the pattern and get it sewn together, it's going to take me maybe a minute to sew on this tail onto the body. And I, I personally just don't enjoy the act of hand sewing. I find it very tedious. Um, I greatly prefer machine sewing, so it's also just a, a personal preference. This pattern would be difficult to draft just by guessing on a piece of paper. Um, my method is pretty foolproof. It doesn't require any math or, or measuring on a flat pattern. Pretty much you just need to either make a, a test plush or a test tail, or you could just do it onto the, the final plush once you get good at the method. You can just directly pattern onto the plush that you're going to make in the end. Um, I absolutely love this method. I feel like I leveled up as a plush maker when I figured out how to do this. Um, I use this method all the time to sew on my appendages and I think it's a, a good thing to learn. So follow along and then you'll be able to sew on pretty much any appendage you want by machine stitching. So the first thing you're going to want to do is pin your tail onto your plush just the way that you want to have it land. So in a previous video I patterned this tail and I also pinned it on but my client wanted a couple changes so I've gone ahead and done that and re-pinned it on. And so this is the final shape that we want it to be. Uh, that's one reason why I add so much extra fabric at the tip of the tail because I'm going to pin this on in a way that I have extra fabric tucked underneath here. So if I were to lift this up, I'm going to have at least a quarter inch of fabric tucked underneath this seam. And that just makes it easier for patterning purposes. Um, what I'm going to end up marking is the seam line, and so I want to have some seam allowance left over just so I can know how big my pattern needs to be. It's alright if some of these edges end up raw, and that happens to me sometimes when I do this process. It's just that you're going to have to remember to add it later on in your pattern. Um, you won't be able to just directly use this piece as a pattern. Uh, but once you have it pinned on exactly the way you want, you want to make sure it's even 
as you can get it. Um, so a couple ways I make sure of that is just making sure that your seams line up. So I want my back seam to be in line with the back seam of this tail. Um, and then on both sides, you want it to be even. Now it doesn't have to be perfect because the way I tend to do this when it's a symmetrical piece is that I only um, mark one side of it and then I mirror it so that way I can make sure that it's perfectly even. But you want to make sure that when you pin it on it is mostly even because if it's not then you're going to end up with too small of a hole or too big of a hole uh, in the end. But this placement looks pretty good. Um, we've also got this line here isn't a perfect circle. It kind of dips here to give some, some definition, um, which would be pretty tough to pattern outside of this method that I use. Uh, so that's one big reason I really like this method is because it's kind of foolproof once you get the hang of it. So now that I've got my tail pinned on exactly the way I want it, I'm going to trace with a water soluble pen um, both where it meets the body and the tail itself. So you could use a permanent marker, but if you mess up, then it's going to, might be a little difficult to tell what is the mess up line and what isn't. Um, also, once you get really good at this method, you could actually do this onto the actual plush itself. Um, instead of making a, a test plush like I have here, uh, frequently I've just been doing this method onto the final plush and skipping the step of, of experimenting. I wouldn't recommend that if that's your first time. Um, there's certain things that you're going to do that could mess up your plush to where you'd have to start over. So again, if it's your first time, just do it on a test plush or if you're nervous about getting it wrong, um, just practice and get the pattern right. So I'm just going to trace exactly around the tail. And one thing that I forgot to mention is that you're going to want this seam to be as clean as you can. So you don't want to have any extra folds here. You want it to lay nice and cleanly uh, along the body. So I just want to make sure that I get this curve in here. I'm going to come back and do the tail. Okay, now I have to take my plush off my stand to do the bottom. Okay, and I'm going to mark the center here, both on the tail and on the plush itself. Um, you're going to want to add some tick marks if this is a, a difficult shape. So I have a tick mark here. Um, I have a kind of an inherent tick mark here because the this color transition is going to have to match up. And then I have one from this seam here, the back seam with the tail seam. So I'm not going to add any more tick marks, um, but if you have a difficult time sewing circular objects together, you might want to add several uh, because these can be kind of difficult sometimes. But that's the first step. So what I'm going to do now is take this tail off and now I'm going to have to mark where the seam allowance should go.
Okay, so I've taken my tail off and now you can see this purple line where I've traced where I want the tail to meet the body. So now all I have to do is add in my seam allowance. On this, you want to be a little bit more generous than you normally are. So I typically do a quarter inch seam allowance. Um, I usually do maybe three eighths or even a half an inch sometimes. This is another time where you want to err on the side of uh, making your seam allowance larger than you think it, it might need to be. Um, you can always make this hole that you're gonna end up making larger, but if you need to make it smaller, you're probably going to have to redo a significant part of your plush. So I had cut out a hole here just to get me an idea of where the tail is going to be when designing all this applique that I'm going to do. Uh, so I was a little overzealous here. This, this gap is a little bit smaller than I want it to be. Uh, so I'm going to have to remember to add just a little bit here um, because I'd like my seam allowance to be more like this width here. Um, one other thing is that I'd, I'd like to curve this in just a little bit more um, than I have marked here. And since this is making my seam smaller, uh, I'm not too worried about it not fitting. And, and Minky is, is stretchy and, and fleeces too. As long as you're using a stretchy fabric, you're going to have some leeway here with uh, it not being an exact match, but not a whole lot. So now I'm just going to draw in a, a generous seam allowance. And I'll know that I need to add more here because I'm not going to have a line drawn. Okay. All right, now we gotta do the tail. So here's my tail that I took off and you can see how this purple line has been drawn and you can see just how much fabric I have extra that I purposely did from the patterning method I use just because I want to be able to draw my seam allowance onto my fabric with this method. I also like to have extra just in case I want to change the angle of the appendage I'm working on a little bit. If you have some extra that gives you a little bit of leeway to to change it just a little bit, not too extreme. Um, so now I'm going to do the same thing as I did with the body. I'm going to draw on my seam allowance. Um, I'm going to be about a quarter inch. So I purposely made the seam allowance larger on the hole I'm going to cut because you can make the hole larger if you need to. Um, but I do want to preserve some accuracy here that I've drawn on. So for the tail or the appendage that you're sewing on, you can go ahead and add your normal seam allowance to the piece. I'm going to clean up this line down here and you might have to do that for some of your pieces where your tracing might not be exact. So I'm just going to follow this line like this and then draw it on. Make sure that I'm copying this tick mark which is just the center of this tail um, which are good tick marks to make. Okay, now I've drawn on my seam allowance. So I'm going to go ahead and cut out this shape 
So one trick you can do um, if you're planning on using this piece to be your, your final object is that you can just mirror uh, the cut directly onto the, the piece that you're making. So what I mean by that is, for example, I'm going to cut straight up to this tick mark, which is the center of my tail. And then cut to the seam allowance. And now that I've cut to the center of my piece, I can just flip it over and cut along this line. So I'm going to use some pins just to make sure that it's perfectly lined up with the edge here. And now I can just cut along where the edge of this other piece of fabric is to exactly mirror the, the seam that I've drawn. So you're going to want to make sure that you go back over the seams where you've cut because you, you've you cut out your, your back stitch here. Um, but besides that, I mean, if this was your finished piece, then you're ready to sew it right on. Pretty easy. Another thing I like to do with the piece that I've cut off, if I'm making a, a final pattern piece instead of a test piece, is that you can use what you've cut to transfer to your pattern piece. So I have a, a tail pattern, which I've got here, and the piece that you saw me work with was taken from this pattern. So I can just lay it on to this pattern piece and then trace along this line and then I have an updated pattern. So I don't necessarily need to take apart this piece here to get the pattern. I can just use the piece that I've cut off to make a, an updated pattern with. So that's useful if you're going to be making the same object multiple times. Um, one issue is that if you've cut your, your item too short, to where if you don't have extra space here, um, then you're not going to be able to use this cut piece or you have to remember to add extra room where you cut it a little bit short. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that same method that I just did with the body. All right, I've gone ahead and cut out where my seam allowance should be. I used the same method of flipping the first cut onto the other side so that this hole is perfectly even. So now all you have to do is uh, sew it on. And again, if you're planning on keeping this pattern, it's a good idea to go ahead and transfer uh, the changes you've made to your pattern before you finalize the plush. Um, since you're going to be unstuffing it, and laying it flat, you could just put it onto your pattern and kind of trace around the holes that you've made um, if you've made them too small. Uh, but otherwise, like I said, you can just use the, 
extra little pieces uh, you've cut off to transfer to your pattern. So I'm going to unstuff this plush uh, along with the tail and I'm going to go back over the seams that I've cut onto uh, to make sure that the back stitch stays strong and now I'm going to sew it together. Okay, so I've got my unstuffed body, I've got my tail, and now I have to pin it together. So I'm going to flip the body to be right side on the inside, wrong side out. And then I'm going to take my tail just as it is and insert it into the hole. And now I just have to pin the tail to the body using the tick marks that I made along the way. So the first one is on the spine. And then I'm going to go ahead and flip it to do the one on the very bottom. So these marks come very handy. Just line them up. Pin it. And then my other one was where the fur pattern meets here. And now I'm just going to ease the rest of the fabric between the marks. So if you've ever sewn a sleeve before, Sewing a sleeve into an arm cap is a very similar process. But if you make your hole the right size, then it's not going to be too big of an issue here. At this point, if you made your hole too small, you can go ahead and cut it a bit larger um, you'll know pretty quickly if it's too large because as you start doing this process you're going to have more fabric on your tail than you are going to have uh, to meet the hole on the body with. But if your hole is too big then you're going to have the opposite problem where your tail is not going to have enough fabric to stretch all the way around the hole on the body that you've made. Unfortunately, in that case, you're going to have to start over um, either by cutting out that exact uh, piece of pattern that you have cut the hole into and removing it from your plush and sewing in a new one or um, potentially having to make your whole plush over again. So that's why I suggest uh, making several tests before you try this method on, on a final plush. So just use a lot of pins here. Eventually you'll get it to fit evenly all the way around. I didn't transfer my other tick mark on this side um, since I'm going to mirror it and it's going to be applique, but, and this is just a, a test plush, so I'm having a little bit more trouble with this side, which probably means that my hole is, uh, a little too small so I could go through and, and trim it up maybe like a sixteenth of an inch or, or an eighth of an inch or so and 
uh, get it to fit a little better. And I would do that probably all, all the way around, although um, if I'm only having an issue on this side, then the problem's probably on this side. But as long as my pattern, when I make my pattern final, I just mirror the cut instead of uh, trying to draw it on my own on both sides it'll it'll come out symmetrical but now you have your your tail pinned into your body uh, right sides together your seams lined up your tick marks lined up so now you just have to sew it together let's go ahead and do that okay so I have my fabric ready to go here all pinned up ready to be sewn um, I have a walking foot on if you guys sew a lot of plushies and use a lot of stretchy fabric like minky and fleece I'd recommend getting a walking foot it's really nice it just helps the fabric move along the feed dogs a little better than uh, without it so I'm gonna be doing a long stitch just because this is a, a test plush and I'm gonna be taking it apart for the pattern when I'm done so I don't want to do more work seam ripping uh, than I have to but if you're doing your own plush then you want to do a nice uh, normal tight stitch just so that it's nice and secure which is one of the reasons you're probably doing this method in the first place so uh, like I said I do a quarter inch seam allowance um, when I do this I tend to put the needle on the left side instead of in the middle um, just because these pieces are pretty small so getting them to line up with the edge of the presser foot the walking foot in the middle of the needle you often end up making your seam shorter than it should be um, which is okay because you can just go ahead and and make it bigger after that but uh, I've found it easier to line it up on on the left side rather than the middle so i'm gonna go ahead and sew this um i have a really bad habit of sewing over my pins i don't recommend doing that i've broken a lot of pins um so please don't judge me And if your fabric bunches up like this as you're going, you can just smooth it with your fingers to get a nice, even, clean seam. All right, so it's all done. Um, you can see that was a lot faster than hand sewing this giant tail on. Obviously we did some prep work to get to this point, but once you're ready to sew, you sew it up in a matter of minutes. And your seam is generally going to be stronger than hand sewing this really large piece on. Um, if I hand sewed this giant tail on, I'd have concerns about how it would last over time because it's such a large tail and such an integral piece of this plush that uh, I'd worry about the, the weight of the tail kind of pulling on the hand stitching over time. So I really just prefer to machine sew on appendages when I can. Um, I just really don't enjoy the act of hand sewing either, um, even if machine sewing can take longer sometimes. 
Um, in my mind, it feels like it, it's faster, uh, I guess, because it's less tedious, maybe. Um, so just checking the seam now looks good. Making sure that all the fabric is uh, caught correctly and nothing's folded over. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, turn this right side out, stuff it, and see how it looks. Alright, I've got my plush stuffed again, and now we can see how the seam looks. So I think it looks really good. I preserved the shape of the seam, how it wasn't a perfect circle, but it dipped inward a little bit towards the bottom here. The seam is nice and clean. It looks more professional than I would be able to get with hand sewing personally. Um, if you look at it from the back, it's nice and even. One way you can compare is to look at the line you drew with where the seam ended up. So you can see for the most part uh, the seam meets the, the purple line, except up here the purple line came out a bit farther than my seam ended up being, uh, but I'm okay with that. I, I like this overall shape that was created. It's a nice, uh, nice even line. Um, this might have dipped out a little bit too much if I ended up going that route, uh, but if it's something that you're worried about, you can certainly go back over this seam just by seam ripping this area and trying to get your stitch line a little bit closer to the purple. I'm not going to be worried about it coming apart because it's going to be nice and tightly sewn together when I go ahead and make the final plush. Um, I'm going to have a consistent pattern now by doing it that way, so if you're making a plush that you're going to make multiple times, now you're going to have a, a set pattern that you can just work with every time and get consistent results. So. You can pretty much attach any appendage this way. Um, heads, arms, legs, obviously tails. I do it with just about everything I want to attach to a plush. Um, it's pretty foolproof once you get the hang of it. So if you use this method and like the results, I'd love to hear from you. And thanks for watching. Bye-bye.